Okay, Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera. So now we proceed to the last kingdom under domain Eukarya which are kingdom Animalia. So what is Animalia? So Animalia actually we refers to the animal. Okay, so first of all we look at the unique characteristic of kingdom Animalia. So the first characteristic are Animalia are multicellular eukaryotes and then second it is holozoite so holozoite means uh, it is a type of heterotrophic nutrition which involve ingestion and also digestion of food and then the third one are uh, no cell wall so animal there is no cell wall and then most reproduce sexually okay and then number five most are capable for locomotion so means that animals is able to move and then it has diverse body plan okay so how we classify organism okay under its phylum okay the classification of animalia are based on so this is the criteria of the classification the first criteria we call as level of organization second germ layer third body plan number four body cavity or coelom number five presence of segmentation another one developmental mode okay so we look at the first criteria which are level of organization okay so there are two types of level of organization of the animal either it is parazoa or you metazoa so what is parazoa the definition is animal without true tissue okay so the animal that is without true tissue so we call as parazoa but for you metazoa it is refers to the animal with true tissue okay and then for germ layer there are two types of germ layer the first one we call as diploblastic the second one uh, triploblastic so what is the difference between diploblastic and triploblastic so remember di means two so the organism which is diploblastic so means that it has two germ layer which are ectoderm and endoderm but for triploblastic animal so tri means three so means that it has three germ layer which are ectoderm mesoderm and also endoderm okay next we look at the body plan okay so th there are three types of body plan in animal in kingdom animalia so the first one we call as a symmetry second radial symmetry another one bilateral symmetry so what is a symmetry it is refers to the animals that are irregular in shape okay for radial symmetry it is refers to the animal body divides into similar half when cut at any central axis okay for the example is uh, in the phylum of cnidaria okay for the, for the example jellyfish so if you put the plane okay at the center okay of the body of the jellyfish so what happen it will cut okay the jellyfish in the similar half okay so that one we call as radial symmetry okay and then another one uh, bilateral symmetry so what is bilateral symmetry it is the animal with right and left half which are mirror image okay so means that if you put the plane okay on the center of this animal so it will cut the animal in mirror image okay next we look at the body cavity or coelom Okay, body cavity actually it refers to the fluid field cavity or ronga. Okay, so there are three types of body cavity. The first one we call as a silomate, second pseudo silomate, another one silomate. So what is a silomate? It is refer to the animal which is lack of body cavity. So means that there is no body cavity. Ha, so a means no. So no silom. Okay, but for pseudo silomate, it is referred to the fluid filled body cavity is not completely enclosed by tissue derived from mesoderm. Okay, but for silomate, it is referred to the silom is completely enclosed by mesoderm. So this is the different in terms of body cavity. So there are three types of body cavity: a silomate, pseudo silomate and also silomate okay so later you have to differentiate the phylum in kingdom animalia based on its body cavity okay and then next we look at the presence of segmentation so the animals okay maybe it has segmentation that we call as metameric segmentation so metameric segmentation refers to the segment contain component of most organ system and also some of the animals okay its segmentation is tegmata Okay, it form a tegmata. So, what is tegmata? Segment fused into functional group. 
Okay and then the other one we look at the developmental mode. So there are two types here. So the first one we call as protostome development. The second one deuterostome development. So what is the difference between these two developmental mode? So for protostome development it is refer to the blast topo develop into mouth but for deuterostome development blastopo or the first opening will develop into anus and second opening develop into mouth okay so this is all the criteria for the classification of animals Okay, so next we look at the classification of Kingdom Animalia. So actually, how many phylum in Kingdom Animalia? So there are nine phylum under Kingdom Animalia. So how we classify all the nine phylum? Okay, so firstly, we can look based on the level of organization. Okay, so we can classify the animals first, either it is parazoa or eumetazoa. So remember, parazoa means there is no true tissue. So in Kingdom Animalia, there is only one phylum. Okay, which we considered as parazoa, which is phylum porifera. And phylum porifera also, okay, its body symmetry is asymmetry. Okay, so the example of phylum porifera is leucosolinia sp or the common name is sponge. Okay, but for you metazoa, okay, the other eight phylum, all of the eight phylum, okay, are you metazoa so means that okay it is already have through tissue okay but the first one we can uh, differentiate the eight phylum first based on its body plan okay either it is radial or bilateral okay and then if you look at here the third one we can classify based on the germ layer so there are two types of germ layer Okay, the first one we call as diploblastic. Diploblastic means that it has um, two germ layer, which are ectoderm and also endoderm. For triploblastic means that it has three germ layer, which are ectoderm, mesoderm and also endoderm. So for diploblastic uh, animal, okay, for diploblastic and radial symmetry animal, so only one phylum here, which is is phylum cnidaria so the example of organism under phylum cnidaria is obelia sp okay and then next the the rest okay the another, uh, another seven phylum of kingdom animalia which is bilateral and also triploblastic so we can differentiate it into its type of coelom either it is a coelomate pseudo coelomate or coelomate okay so if you look at here okay so means that for triploblastic animal okay we can only classify okay the animal based on its type of coelom only for triploblastic animal for diploblastic okay we don't have to classify it based on its type of coelom okay we look on uh, we look only on the triploblastic animal okay so for triploblastic animal Okay, we can differentiate it into its type of coelom. Either it is a coelomate, pseudo coelomate or coelomate. So for a coelomate, only one phylum which is phylum platyhelminthes. So actually phylum platyhelminthes, it is the phylum for tip worm. Or the scientific name we call as tenia species. And then for pseudo coelomate, also only have one phylum which is phylum nematoda. So phylum nematoda Actually, it is a roundworm or the scientific name we call as Ascaris lumbricoids. Okay, and then another one phylum. Oh, sorry, another one are uh, coelomate. Okay, so for coelomate, we can differentiate it into its developmental mode. Either it is protostome or deuterostome. So for protostome, okay, the phylum are phylum Annelida. Phylum Arthropoda and also Phylum Mollusca. But for Deuterostome, okay, it has two phylum here which are Phylum Echinodermata and also Phylum Chordata. Okay, uh, so this is how you classify okay, the phylum under Kingdom Animalia.